let's start today's session on sway and forms. There's a quick introduction of what I do. I've been working on Office as a platform for over decades now. As you know, we are conducting a series of sessions. Today is on Sway and Forms. If you have any questions, please mention them in the Q&A panel. We have been covering all these products one by one, and today we are going to cover two products together because comparatively their functionality is much smaller than other products. In very simple terms, Sway is used for creating web pages and forms is forms, some kind of data entry. Unlike all other products in Office 365, these two products do not have apps of their own, either on desktop or mobile. They are purely browser based. Any browser will do. So let's go through them quickly and understand how to use them. Sway is designed to make creation of web pages very easy. All that you have to do is give the content. You add the content, design is automatically done, and without you doing anything extra, the web page is auto published. You just share the link. So it's a very simple process. The idea is you focus on the content and everything else will be managed for you. This may sound simple, but in real life, if you have to publish a web page within a company or for external audiences, typically you need to talk to IT or you have to know programming. You have to know which web server, what URL, many complexities. All those are gone. How do you add content? Go to Sway, choose create a new Sway and just specify the content. Typically it starts with a title and then you click the plus sign. We can add many kinds of things. Broadly. Text and non text. And if there are multiple items like pictures, for example, we create groups. Different types of groups are also available. So here is a group type called stack. So I added a stack, added few images there, and then you click on the preview button. As soon as you add stuff, it's automatically adjusted, designed and ready to view. Because it's a stack, which is a collection of multiple images, you choose how it will look to the viewer. So I have chosen stack as the option. What does that really mean? When you see it on a web page, it'll look like this. And when you click on the topmost image, it'll flip and go to the next one like this. If you think this is not the right approach, you can use a grid. You can use different options available. Another very nice thing is to use for comparison. So I put two pictures. I just uploaded the pictures and then it dynamically generates this. This is a slideshow I am showing you, but it's interactive. So you drag this particular icon or on a mobile phone, you can just touch and drag and it actually gives you an interactive feel of how the comparison is. Very useful. Now, what I just said is very important. Whether you're viewing this on a browser, on a desktop or a tablet or on a mobile, of course the size of the screen changes. Desktops are horizontally bigger. Mobiles are vertically bigger. So the web page doesn't need to be told that it automatically adjusts its size. The technical term for that is a responsive web page that's done automatically for you. You don't need to know the techniques. Now the next thing is if you don't want to go to Sway, even from Word, you can create a Sway page. So many customers are using it for product brochures online or for announcements related to announcements related to picnics or events or crisis situations or whatever it is. People are using it as their web presence as well, a mini website 
or a microsite. So here is a Word document. In Word, if you have the new version, you have transform option, which is specifically designed for use with Sway. So it asks you, do you want to transform it to a web page? And as I said, there are multiple styles available. You choose the style and that's it. Now this particular document is a long document. It converts it nicely by headings into different sections. In fact, at the bottom right corner, you will see sort of table of content, which is also dynamically generated. And this is interactive either on touch or on mouse. So this is how word can be converted to Sway. As I said, there are multiple design styles and if you have your own branding, you can also customize these styles. If you don't want to choose a particular style, you can just click on the remix button. It'll do some mix and match and give you a variation. Whichever you like, you keep. So in technical terms, it is similar to Adobe Spark or Canva, but those are more designed for creating graphics for social media, whereas this is more designed for creating a web page, either for intranet or for external use. So when it comes to sharing the page, as soon as you finalize it, there is nothing to publish. It's pre-published. So you just go and choose who should see it. Specific people, groups means teams basically, and everyone in the organization or the third one is an anonymous link, which is like publishing a browser page or a website with one page in it. Then copy the link, send it to people, and that's it. The best part about Sway is because it is asking you to provide only content, it accepts all kinds of content. I don't expect you to read this long list, but bottom line, everything you can think of can be a part of Sway. For example, even Power BI dashboards can be a part of Sway. So many people are using it for distributing reports to the field. You can put YouTube videos and many, many other things. Now about forms. Forms again is a very flexible tool. It can be used for all these things and more. Basically, you add questions of different types and then you figure out what to do. But the first decision you have to take is am I creating a form for simple data entry? or I'm creating a quiz or a question and answer for testing purpose. Form is basically used for eliminating paper-based forms. There are many companies which still use paper-based forms, which can be very easily converted to this kind of functionality. Of course, there are many other tools which are more popular like Google Forms or SurveyMonkey. The difference is this thing called Microsoft Forms integrates with your entire organizational environment. So it understands who is an official user and that's why when someone fills a form, you can actually choose whether it is internal or external. You can also share forms with others and you can create forms specifically for a particular team. As I said, when you create a team, the group of people in the team is also called a group. Now, the process is slightly more complex than Sway. You create a form first, test it, and then share it with people. So let's go through this one by one. So here is a form. When you start it, there will be no questions. Then you keep on adding questions one by one. Once you are finished with that, you click on the preview button, which is like a test check it out whether it is correct, spelling mistakes, the order of questions is all, which questions are supposed to be mandatory, which ones are not, all that you check. Having done that, then you can share it. Like Sway, it can be internal or external, but remember Sway is a read-only thing, whereas forms, you expect input from people. So when people are filling a form, you may want to restrict people that they fill the form only once. Or if I'm conducting an examination online, I don't want people to fill the same and 
ends of paper 20 times. Now that is possible only for internal audience because when you share the form internally, forms knows who is logged in. That is why it can identify the person and you can restrict to one entry per person. If it is an external form, then you have two things to worry about. One is you can't restrict that one response per person. So in case people respond multiple times, you should have a logic to figure out which ones to keep, which ones not to address. And second, because it is anonymous by default, if you really want to know who answered, you'll have to add one extra question which identifies the person name, email ID, whatever it is. So that's about sharing. How do you share a link? The link is auto created. You can just copy paste the link and send it wherever you want, or you can also create a nice QR code from here itself. If you want to embed it in your blog or a website or Sway for that matter, you can create an embed code as well, or you can mail it. So that's how you share the link. Finally, when people get the link, they can click on it and they can fill it up on browser or mobile. Either way, it's a browser. Again, this will be dynamically adjusted to the width of the screen. Having done that, the next is analysis. Now, sometimes when we do surveys, survey doesn't finish in one day. You need to give enough time for people to respond. Sometimes you have to send reminders and stuff like that. But because this is all happening online, you can always go and look at the current status without having to wait for the entire survey to be finished. So this is live analytics available anytime after responses start coming. I'm not going to show it, but there are more options for a start date and an end date, sending an automatic thank you message and stuff like that. Once the data is there, you can analyze it here itself, or if you want further detailed analysis, you can export it to Excel. Once it is in Excel, you can do various things like putting conditional formatting as I have done here, or doing pivot tables or whatever else you do to analyze it further. Now, what kind of questions? There are many types available. Some of them are obvious like choice, text, rating and date. Couple of them require explanation, so I will show you those. So text is very simple, less text or more text. So if you say reasons for dissatisfaction, one line may not be enough. You give detailed text, which is called long answer. Each question can be made mandatory or not. Then rating is simple. You choose how many stars to show and what symbol to show. But this is important. This is called Likert, where there is a matrix. Columns decide the level of satisfaction and rows decide the parameter against which that level of satisfaction is being talked about. So that is called Likert. The next one, which is also very popular, especially with people who do surveys very often, is called Net Promoter Score. I am sure you have seen or participated in surveys which ask you this. The display of this or the analysis of this is a little complex, but you don't have to worry about it. This is done automatically for you, but if you export it to Excel, you'll have to take extra effort to analyze this. Promoters, passives and decorators. Promoters means people are on the green side. Detractors means people are on the less than zero and in between are passives. One nice feature, which is another use case for forms, is it can allow people to upload files. This can be very useful as an alternative to traditional email based things like you have an RFP and you want vendors to submit quotations. Instead of waiting for them to send email, just send them the link with one question or two questions rather. Who is the vendor? A text box and uh, the file itself. Of course, they can only upload the file. They can't see other people's files and those files go to OneDrive. So this is a very useful thing for collecting files. Now, this is just gathering data. 
after the data is gathered, you will analyze it. And when you analyze it, obviously you're going to take some action. But what if you want to take action instantly as soon as a form is submitted without the analysis? For example, I'm doing a customer satisfaction survey. I have a score of one to five. Anything below score of three is bad, so I want to send an apology letter immediately, but I don't want to keep monitoring that manually, so that is called automation. How is this done? This is done in conjunction with another tool called Power Automate, which we will see later in another session. So I'm not going to explain how this whole thing works, but just look at the logic. I'm creating a workflow automation thing inside Power Automate. Doesn't require programming. I say when this particular form is filled called capture feedback, once each form is submitted, look at the response, check the customer feedback. Is it below three? Then send an apology mail. Is it not below? Then send a thank you mail. There is more to it. For example, depending on why person has given me less than three, I can also send a mail to the departmental head and do an audit trail, add data to Excel, many, many other things. But this is just to show you forms does not work in isolation. It works with other components of Office 365, and that's the difference between any other forms tool and Microsoft forms. It is not sitting alone. It gets benefited from everything else which is in the platform. Finally, when you want to create a quiz, the functionality is similar. The only extra thing is for every question you can specify points and when you are giving options, you can choose the correct answer and in case people give right or wrong answer, there can be hint text as well. So that's about quiz. Once quizzes are being submitted or exams are being done online, it will give you of course the average score and it will also give you graphical analysis. Further analysis you export to Excel. One of the things which uh, Microsoft has improved is it looks at what answers, what questions you are giving and tries to suggest. Tries to suggest equivalent or relevant answers using AI. Every question may not give these answers, but whenever they are there, it saves you some data entry. It also gives you branching, which is very important when you have a little more sophisticated form. For example, I am asking people, do you use Word more often or Excel? Depending on their answer, I want to ask the relevant question and skip the irrelevant question. That is done using branching logic. Now forms does have some limitations. All the UI controls you want may not be there. Conditional logic is there, but it is not as sophisticated as a full fledged uh, surveying software like say SurveyMonkey and one to many tables. That means one form and many rows of data is not possible and tabular data entry, which sometimes people like when they have to fill a lot of data like Excel is not available. Obviously, it's a form, it's not a table. But if you want those kind of things, we have other alternatives. Excel is anyway commonly used, but even in Excel, if you have Office 365, there is an Excel based survey as well. Or you can create a SharePoint list for capturing tabular data where this is of course an intranet kind of situation, potentially extranet as well, where you can have additional security. People can type like Excel without having Excel on a browser and security can be such that the person who is logged in can see only his or her data and edit or delete only his or her data. And that data can be dynamically linked to Power BI or Excel for live reporting. And Power Apps we will see later how to integrate with forms. So that's it. That's all there is in the base session. Now let's take questions. All right.
So can question is Janaka is asking. Can we use Sway to collect data from outsiders and save in OneDrive? So Sway itself does not have anything which is an input. Sway is read only, but you can embed a forms form in Sway and then the data will go to forms. Similarly, a SharePoint form can be embedded. Anything which has an embed code can be embedded. So it could be a Google form you embed in Sway. But where the data goes depends on the tool which you are using. All right. Next one. In which scenario should one use Sway over a page in SharePoint? Is there anything that Sway can but SharePoint page cannot? So SharePoint editor is uh, more of a glorified HTML editor that is designed more for a technical authoring kind of thing. Whereas Sway is just for quickly putting together content. So if you want to give HR facility for creating web pages for announcements, for example, in a crisis situation like this, Sway is better than SharePoint. SharePoint is a difficult product to learn. Sway is practically zero learning. For online test, how can I set time limit? I don't think there is time limit right now. Ravi Kumar is asking, can we import already existing format into forms? No, we cannot. Can we connect Power BI to forms directly without having to go to export to Excel? No, not at this point of time because the data inside forms wherever it stores is not exposed right now. If and when that is exposed, then probably it could be an atom feed. Any more questions or should we close? All right. So this is where you will find all the videos. And this is my team, Shesham, Anindo, and Zeus, who have been working with me to make this possible. By the way, these three stickers which I have put is a latest feature I did in PowerPoint. If you go to insert pictures, now you have stock art. Earlier we used to get online pictures, which is still there, but now we have specialized stock art, stickers, cutout pictures, and icons, all from Microsoft completely royalty free. For this feature to be available to you, you'll have to be in Office Insider version of Office. So I guess that's all the time we have. Thank you.